Hi there. This is such a weird hobby. I've often said I can't explain it. And today I really can't explain it more than anything. Actually, I'm having a really lovely time. I'm, I'm testing out my new machine, getting to grips with it. The day is too. I'm, I'm not gonna bang on about what I feel about it yet. I will do soon. Suffice to say, I think certain programs in the latest, um, the latest software are pretty unusable. Certain programs are very good, but I'm no, I'm no expert on this machine yet. So as I said, I will leave that to later. Anyway, I've got him out with me. He's having a lovely time hooning about because it's land I know really well and it's quite quiet and it's not, there's, th there's no contamination. There's no waste or anything. These are shotgun cartridge. There's no ring pulls or green waste, nothing. It's a really good test field, but I've done it forever and ever. Um, and so he can do what he likes, but he's, do you know what? He's staying closer these days, which is brilliant. But I've got this to tie him up to a tree or something if I get bored. But anyway, I had a signal down here after a few shotgun cartridges. I was running through all the programs, Sent C, Sent CFT. Um, I'm settling at the moment for single frequency, which is really good still. Um, I'm, I'm thinking it's sharper than the, the Deus One. I don't even have my, um, my speaker plugged in. I'm really sorry. So you're not gonna be able to hear it, but. <laughs> I'll, it's a it's a perfect sound for those of you who like numbers it's a 78 um i might even i might even um i might even put a beep or two in but for, i'm not, i'm completely blown away i haven't even picked it up I have not even picked it up. It's just there. It's just so obvious what it is that I'm just, I'm, I'm over the moon. <laughs> Tasky couldn't give a monkey's, but anyway, let's just stop looking at it there and pick it up, I think. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think we've established it's gold and we've established it's it's hammered gold, I would have thought. I've not found one before, if it is what I think it is. Bent over there, so we'll see. Gosh, even I don't want to rub this too much. I've got no idea who it is. It might even be a foreign one. I've no idea. Um, we'll have to clean it up properly and have a closer look. I've got a feeling I can't, don't think I can see a monarch. Um, but I, I just don't know enough about um, medieval gold coins to, to, to even hazard a guess. I don't know what condition it's in, but it's nice and big. And it's nice. <laughs> and it's nice and gold. My God. Um, well, we'll go back to headquarters and this will be a short video anyway because I'm not going on after this. There's just no way I wouldn't be able to concentrate. I've done, I, I've done what I needed to do today. But anyhow, Tasky, are you ready? Let's go. I have found one of these before. I found this um, and it's a, it's a French one. And I'll show you it in a minute. But the, there's one thing in common with the only two hammered gold coins I've ever found. And you can have a lifetime of metal detecting and not even have a sniff of one of these. I mean, I mean, these are finds in the lifetime stuff. I'm, I'm just so lucky and I really know it. But the one thing they both have in common is that <laughs> Tasky was with me both times. I do bring them out with me quite a lot. You don't tend to see it because the, the majority of the times I'm, my better fields are in places where he's not safe. Um, there, there's too much livestock, there's too much excitement, there's, there are roads in the area. I, I can't take him because I don't want to have him on a lead and he likes to run around. But both these coins were found in areas where, where you know, he is particularly safe and he comes out with me, but I don't, I don't tend to find much of them, so you don't see particularly see videos of them. I mean, I do spend a lot of time, like, like most of you know, a lot of time finding nothing. I do a lot of metal detecting. I'm really, really lucky. Um, it'd be lovely if I could do it completely full time. But 
but I don't show you those times when I'm finding nothing. You wouldn't want to watch them. So you don't, okay, Tess, well done. <laughs> you can go now. I don't show you, but I just don't show you those times. But look, let's just get back to these. Okay, so this is the first one I found. It's a French one. And I think it's, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, 1400 or something like that. And it's, it was absolutely mind blowing to find that. But this, now this is completely, I mean, as I said, it's, it's a detectorist absolute dream to find one of these. Um, and I mean, if I ever get close to finding another one, I will just, I don't, I don't know. I know, I know how lucky I am. Now, it is, it's a half noble from the reign of Edward III. Gold coins hadn't been produced until the reign of Edward III. Well, that's not strictly true because I've been doing a bit of research on this and there's something called a gold penny. There's something called a gold penny, which I didn't realise about, which was a, a gold coin introduced by Henry III. So three kings previous to Edward III. And Edward I and Edward III did, you know, reign for quite a long time. So was, I think it was about 70 years between gold coins. Now, we don't know much about the gold penny because it wasn't very popular. It was recalled, as it were. And obviously all the gold was men melted down, so they don't really exist. They're, it's not even mentioned in this. This is why when, we, when, when I started researching through Spink, says very firmly, the first gold coinage, yep, here, it says, says Edward III, no gold coinage issued before 1344. And if you look at Henry III, well, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no gold coins under his, under him, but, but they were produced. Okay, okay, before you all get too excited, it's me from the future, um, correcting myself, because the gold penny is in Spink. Um, I couldn't see it anywhere, but I put it on the detecting hub, mentioning that Spink didn't have it in there. Maybe this was too old since the coin that I referred to was sold in 2021, 2022. This is the 2020 edition and was told, yes, it is, it is, it is. So I looked a bit more carefully and here it is. <sighs> Tucked away after all the silver on Henry III, you've got this tiny little thing here as if it's almost like an afterthought with the gold penny on it. I think I can be vaguely excused. This is a, this is a brilliant book. In, in, under each monarch, you have it gold, silver, and then tin and bronze and all the rest of it in that order. So I went straight to the beginning of Henry III to see if there was any gold. No, no, no. Right after all the silver, right at the end, you've got this poxy little entry with the description is gold penny of 20 pence as illustration. I mean, the, the most disdainful entry you could possibly imagine. I mean, it does, there's, there's no mention of a gold coin in his biography. I mean, if you look at other um, monarchs, you get all sorts of stuff written about them and um, all sorts of interesting things to give you an idea of what's going on. Edward III, during Edward's early years, small quantities of silver coins, and it will talk about the gold and the silver and the bronze. Not with Henry III, all you get tucked away right at the end, as if they didn't even really want you to see it, is that pathetic little entry <laughs> to one of the rarest, most important coins around. I mean, it is extraordinary. So I was wrong. I'm the first to admit it, um, but it was quite hard to find. I think eight remain. Eight examples are now known to survive, including one which I think I do remember reading. It wasn't very long ago. In 2022, um, a metal detectorist found one and it sold for half a million pounds. Now, th th <laughs> this isn't worth half a million pounds, but it is part of Edward III's gold coinage. And basically up until then, um, but, you know, from Roman and Saxon times, not sure even the Saxons had gold coins. Um, but up until then, there were no real gold coins in circulation from Norman times onwards. So this was the first one. Now, they were popular and a lot were minted, apparently. So it, it's no surprise you do see these being found, but they are still quite rare. Now, again, I put it on the detect detecting hub because if you look at nobles, they look very similar. Edward III's nobles, Richard II's nobles, um, Henry IV's nobles, they all look much of a muchness. You need an expert really to tell you what they are. And there were enough of those on the detecting hub and they got back to me very quickly and said Edward III, half noble. Now, the, now it's, got a, it's got a little bend right there, which I suspect I will probably have straightened professionally. It's all a bit crumpled. And I don't dare do it myself, but I've got a feeling that important information, Ray, the mint mark, which might tell us which coinage it is, even though um, Electus on the um, 
detecting hub said well you know you're going to have to get you know it properly seen to but he reckoned it was something called um he reckoned it was transitional treaty period so about 1361 and um, the treaty period is 1361 to 69 so i think transitional treaty period um it's really probably rather a short window but anyway I, we, we, I suspect I will have to undo that 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 bend. Um, I, I quite like in both these coins they've got a bit of a bend in them. I quite like them having a bit. I think it just adds to the character of, of exactly the way. But in the same way as I tell people, don't be so silly when it comes to saying, um, don't clean your coins. Well, they weren't supposed to be unclean. They weren't supposed to look like we find them. So if you want to clean them, clean them. It's technically, therefore, I should get this straightened because that's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look nice and straight. So we'll see. But anyway, the bottom line is I'm absolutely, completely gobsmacked over the moon. What else? What else can I say? I can't stop holding it. I can't stop looking at it. Um, it's just the most incredible colour. Um, and when I saw it that day, I knew exactly what it was. Funnily enough, as I, I flipped over the, the, the clod and it was obviously on top of it and it just flipped out like that and I could see it. I didn't have any of my filming stuff with me. I had to go back to the car, which is about 20 minutes away, to get everything. Um, Tasky was with me all the day, which was really nice. And, and, and get back and, 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 and film it all. But um, it was really just... just I, I, I don't know what to say, so I won't say anymore. It's an Edward III half gold half noble gosh uh, let's go back to the fields because the following day i find something else which is really quite interesting while again just being out with the, the new machine and just playing with it really that's what i really wanted to do just just get used to all the programs all the things that it's telling me and i find something else which is really cool as you'll see right now um and um thanks very much for listening well, as I said, there's no way I can go on after this. I wouldn't want to anyway. Um, it's just lovely. Thank you very much for watching. Um, we'll be doing a lot more with this. Anyone, any machine would have found that, by the way. Um, this is not clever old Deus. Even though it was, you know, it was, had a bit of depth. It was four or five inches. Anyway, for me and a very, very hot dog. Um, see you next time. Good boy, Tasky. Well, I hope you can hear me because it's like always so bloody windy. I didn't realise how windy it was in this country until so, so I started making metal detecting films. Anyway, I've come to this rather lovely field. I'm actually still just testing my metal detector at the moment. So filming's taken rather a back seat while I get to grips with this. It's more important that I get to grips with this than I set up cameras all day long. But, um, and I've also come to a field that I don't particularly rate that highly, but it's very quiet so I can get used to it and also not feel that I'm going to find really good things because I'm unlikely to. Even though we did find something absolutely bloody fabulous yesterday. Um, I mean, mind-blowing if you haven't seen the video of that, but I've come back today just... I've calmed down and I'm having a lovely time. I found two... I found two hammered... Two cut halves. This one's really rather lovely. It's an Irish one. You can tell by the sort of triangle in it. As soon as you see a triangle in these early coins, it's more than likely to be um, to mean it's Irish. Um, and it's a voided long cross, which means I think Henry the Third, possibly Edward the First. I think they went just into his reign as well but I think that's probably Henry III, and that's lovely. This one, gosh, it sounded like foil, um, but still, it's, it's gonna be a good machine. It's gonna be a fun machine, that. Um, but that one, and there's not much on that, but again, I think it's avoided. Um, I think it might even be a short cross, that one. Anyway, oh. But then just, uh, just down here, now this looks really like this might be something really quite interesting. It's still in the clod.
that I think that might well be a brooch, a really early brooch of sorts. It looks Saxon with that ribbing there. <laughs> My God, perhaps, well, that's really, really weird. And now it's hollow. It's made, it, it looks like it's part of something. I'm wondering now how old this is. It looks like the end, it looks like a fishtail, like one of those, um, what do you call them? Those sort of fish that sort of move a bit, but, that, but they're modern, but this, is, this isn't modern. I've never seen anything like it. Um, it can't be a brooch being that thick. It's got a sort of, well, that's just, um, but uh, my God, I've no, I have absolutely no idea. But that is proper unusual. That to me looked like, before I realised how conical it was and how sort of three-dimensional it was, as it were, um, I would have said um, end of a fantail brooch or something like that all day long. But maybe not. But it looks like a dolphin's tail. <laughs> well, that's a completely new one on me. I'm absolutely blown away by it. Let's go and have a closer look. We've got to with this because I want to know what it is. Right, leave this, we'll, we'll, we'll leave all this here. Hi there, welcome back. Well, I got really excited by this because it's just unlike anything I've seen before. And when it was in the clod like that, before I realised quite how conical and sort of three-dimensional it was, I was, I just thought it was, um, I thought it was probably a Saxon brooch or something. I don't have anything to hand. I usually do, um, showing you what I mean. But you do get these sort of fan tails, as it were, on some of those brooches. And you've got to admit, it would, it, I mean, it could easily have been. But then it came out and then I thought, gosh, well, this is, it's a sort of tail of a sort of mammalian um, sea creature, like a sort of dolphin. You know, the, the animals that have a backbone which goes like that, not like a fish that has, you know, goes that way. Um, sort of dolphin or a whale or something, but no, I, 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 almost certainly not. It's got a, well, it's got a little rivet hole there, and probably one on the other side to have attached it to something. So anyway, I mean, it's just a, it's a lovely tactile object. I put it on the detectinghub.co.uk with a little bit of an anticipation because the last time I found something which I thought was absolutely mega, um, I thought it was a Celtic pendant. I put it on the detecting hub and, and apparently it was a novelty pipe tamper and I fought my case and I fought my case like we often do saying no it's not no it's not no it's not and they all said yes it is yes it is yes it is and therefore eventually you've just got to give up you've got to think well if everyone's thinking it's one thing and I'm the only person thinking it's the other then I'm probably in the wrong so novelty pipe tamper it probably was don't I don't have that to hand either so I was hoping I was this not not another novelty pipe tamper um no one was particularly sure there was a few ideas including, which is almost as bad as a novelty pipe tamper, um, someone said it, it might be the business end of a toasting fork. Well, I was praying it wasn't that either. And who knows, it, it might have been. You could have had um, a, a couple of things going off there, but they would have been very thin by the look of that. And then Ronan, who is a young metal detectorist from North Wales, and he's a bit of a Bronze Age um, expert. He's got some land up there where he's finding the most incredible Bronze Age bits and pieces. Um, I don't think he's on YouTube, but he's on TikTok. I'll leave a link to his his TikTok page. He, he finds some incredible things. And he got onto it and said, I reckon it's a, it could be a Bronze Age knife like this. And and he's put a photograph up, which I've, um, with, with, a, with a portable antiquities scheme number. So I have ref referenced that and there it is. Now, I think that's very, very similar. I mean, it looks sort of identical. So it's almost certainly, well, what it says, late Bronze Age socketed leather working knife um, made from copper alloy. I mean, it's, it's got the sort of the, the ribbed bit by the narrowest part of the neck. And that would have probably gone into a, a blade of sorts and it would have been used. Uh, task, <laughs> tasky sit. Sit. Thank you. Um, and, and it would have probably been, it would have sort of fitted onto something like that, I presume. And I've, I've no reason. Uh, uh, other members of the hub agreed that this was, you know, pretty much spot on. And I've no reason. And, also, and, and that's what I'm going with. 
I'll take Bronze Age knife over Toasty for any day of the week. Anyway, if, if that's what it is, and I suspect, and, and I really think it, it, it is, and so well done, Ronan, thank you. Um, period Bronze Age from uh, 900 BC to 750 BC. So, you know, I mean, my God, I mean, those two things, one, one after the other, one day after the other, while I was out testing my machine and not really taking metal detecting too seriously. There's a lesson there somewhere, isn't there? I'm sure of it. Um, don't take it too seriously. Don't, don't, you know, the, the more you overthink metal detecting and the more you tinker around and obsessed with iron falsing like I've been slightly and, and iron masking and you've got to get your detector set up for the perfect conditions to your land, all the rest of it, bollocks to that. Just, you can do all that at some point, but don't overthink it. Find a a nice program that you get on with just go out and find stuff because you will and thank you very much for listening to all that um and let's get back to the field well this is this is proving really fun this machine i've definitely had teething problems with it but i was warned i would and i think i think we're going to have a bit of fun with this i'm really excited and um, thank you very much for watching and um and see you next time <laughs>